the tricycle. I'm gonna try to do a quick video on this uh, RX100 Blur 5. Yeah, it's gonna be shaky as hell. I'm gonna drop the quality down to 1080, 24 frames, or, uh, or this thing don't work more in a few minutes. Again, it's a 4K camera that just don't shoot 4K. Vision is getting the beachfront room at the, at the Wild Orchid because those beachfront rooms they have this nice grassy area out front where the babies can run wild and play. And then you got the beach, obviously, so they can play on the beach, put their toes in the water. I don't want them swimming in that water, but they can uh, basically got a place to run and play and look at the ocean and get the hell out of the house for a while. So that's where we're going. I'm going to check it out. I, I looked on a Goda and I could get the room for like less than like, like 2,800 pesos. Less than 3,000 pesos. If you go to the website, you know, it's like five or whatever. I'm going to go here and look at the room first and make sure it's what I'm envisioning. And we're going to stay over here for a couple days and allow me to do a good thorough review on the wild orchid. I mean, I've been there before and you know, I've had people stay there before. But I don't think I've ever done a video, you know, showing you around the whole grounds and, uh, you know, just giving you a nice tour of, of the wild orchid and a, a fair review of it. So, folks, thanks for joining me on this quick video. Not sure where exactly it's going to take me. But the babies are sleeping, so I said, you know what, it's just time to get out of the house for a minute and go check this out. marked area and again I know this is going to be a little shaky it's, sh it's shooting in 1080 which allows you to shoot with the uh, active intelligent mode but it's still pretty shaky compared to what you're used to looking at on the GoPro or the DJI Osmo Pocket give you a look at the Mata N River looking towards Subic Bay Put the camera down while we traverse the uh, checkpoint up here. But take a look at this big monster of a building over here. Okay, so uh, shout out to the gentleman working the gate, the young man, uh, the guard. Very nice guy. And here's just a look around coming into the wild orchid. Plenty of parking. You know, if you got a vehicle, you're coming down, there's plenty of parking here. That's a good thing. And this whole place is fenced in with security. Okay, folks, so I got us a room booked, booked it on a Goda. I'll put the numbers down when I get a chance. But it, it was a good thing I booked on a Goda because I had like 20 something dollars when the Goda points that were uh, about to expire. So, hell, I was about to lose over a thousand pesos. And I'll talk about um, it, it, the hotels can never beat the Goda price. I always try it, I always go to the hotels. Uh, just to give them a try, a, 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 just to give them a chance to beat their own price on the Goda. Thank you, my brother. Because the Goda takes a percentage, right? So they've never been able to beat the Goda price. And then you're standing in front of them, saying, "Hey, here's the Goda 
price and they're trying to give you the discount but you're telling them hey if I book on a Goda it's taking 20% or 25 whatever percentage they they have worked out with a Goda and so they're losing that extra 25% but the, the hotels will never beat the Goda price they'll never honor it um, they just won't do it that's why I'm gonna go to player you know why pay more I just stood there right in front of the desk clerk and said hey um, you know if you can't if you can't beat this price I got a book on a goat and then I figured out I had those uh, extra points I was gonna lose I'm like hey it's over I got, I'm not losing that thousand so the room uh, beachfront room nice grassy area over there where the babies can play and uh, you know just get some fresh air Okay, so the room room is good for two adults, two babies. They charge a thousand pesos per night for extra adult. Now, since I'm rolling with two ladies, I'm gonna, you know, I'll pay cash a thousand per night, so it'll be two thousand extra. And if I want a bed in there, it's a thousand a night extra too. So I'm adding four thousand that I'll pay when I check in. Uh, but again, by booking on a go, that basically offset the original price of the room. So I'm happy. Today is a sunny day after these typhoons roll through. A lot of trash on the beach, a lot of trash. But that's just part of it, you know? And again, I'm, I'm not really worried about them going swimming. I just want them to run and play and just get the hell out of the house for a while and run wild. That's the objective. Folks, I had no idea. Over here no idea. at Johan's, they have such a selection of beer. I'm talking Singha, Chong, Murphy's, Polliner, Budweiser, Beck's, Leffy Blonde, Ho Garden, Stella Artois. Uh, what is that, Bush? Got all kind of beers here, and I had no idea. I had no idea, but I'm, I, I'm starting out with this Leffy Blonde. And I am excited as can be about this Leffy Blonde. I had no idea. You, you, and folks, your brakes still squealing? I'm gonna tell you right oh. now, Johan's has got up. the best selection of beers. It's nice. Everything it's from Singha, Ho Garden, Polliner, Heineken. I hear, I hear on his, on folks, his uh, YouTube. <laughs> this is my new favorite place to drink because they have. <laughs> All the quality beers right here. I know it's not him. I'm still uh, drinking uh, Heineken Draft down in Barcelona. But if you were looking for a selection, Leffy Blanc, Belgium beers. Uh, right here, right here at Johans. We'll see you, Kevin. Folks, Johans is a place if you're a beer connoisseur. And that's just the way it goes. You never know until you step into these places. You know, you got your favorites you like to go to, right? But I'm a goddamn beer drinker. I'm a beer connoisseur. And so I'm sitting there in front of that cooler just staring at which way do I want to go. I drink a Belgian beer. I drink a Thai beer. I drink a Bavarian beer. Polar. I just, I just went around the world on my beer drinking activities. Here's Treasure Island. So I'm really, uh, I'm really excited and really thankful, man. Kevin, thanks for uh, meeting me over there, man. It's the first time I've been in there drinking, but it won't be the last because quality beer. I'm not saying that SMB and San Mig Light is bad beer, but I am saying it's fucking cheap beer. Okay, it's like natural light. Okay. I love natural light. It's a great beer, but it's a fucking cheap beer. There's a difference between quality beers and cheap beers. You know, the way the fucking hangover, the way the high affects you, all that stuff. So up in there, I can get all my quality beers. And the fucking price was on time. Very reasonable. Cheap. Uh, they got it going on, so I'll definitely back, be back to Joe's do some hardcore beer drinking. Right now I'm going to get some fish and chips. Um, my wife just texted me and she said, the babe, uh, well, Maria's up. Of course she's still sleeping. But I told her, I'm not, I'm not 
staying out all night tonight. It's not no crazy night. So she wants me to bring her some food. She wanted a hamburger and I said, there ain't no fucking hamburger. I'm just joking, but she said, why? Why? Because I'm going over to Midnight Rambler and get some goddamn fish and chips. Uh, what I've been trying to get for a while and I just keep going over there on Mondays when they're closed. That's where we're going. Get in that Rambler, get some fish and chips, my friends. And it is bumpy as a son of a bitch. Okay, so we're gonna be staying. Now look, right through there is how you get to the rooms for uh, Wild Orchid. You know, the, the rooms that are on the beach. So that's where we're gonna be staying for two days. Had to use my go to cash. Yeah! Damn fucking road over here is fucking bumpy as a mother. And there's a blue rock. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna be staying at the Wild Orchid for a couple of days. I had some go to cash that was gonna expire. And why give away free money? Fucking use it. What's up, buddy? So I'm taking my crew over there tomorrow at noon. Check-ins at 2, but I told her, hey, we showing up at 1. We're going to maximize our time. So folks, I'm, I'm rocking it mini pearl style. Time to go shield up. Put the fucking diaper on your face. Put the fucking bullshit device on your face. It ain't going to save nobody from nothing. Just makes you look like a fucking idiot. Oh yeah, she got a barbecue out there. Passing the phase line right here. Traffic's backed up. I don't think it's backed up all the way to Our Lady of Lourdes. Uh, no, it's only backed up. And if you say it's backed up to Central Park Reef. Let me come over here and see if I can get some fish and chips. See what's going on over here. And that Outback Billabong, I may have to step in there and have a drink. down in there. All right, folks, here's the prices right here. If you're looking for um, how much the laundry is, and this is a uh, you know, new new washers and dryers. And right here I get, uh, well, when we stack them two together, both of these took took two loads. And it's 150 pesos a load, so it's 300 pesos. That's about six, uh, six US dollars. And they'll get them back to me in a couple hours, but I told them, hey, I'll come back on Saturday. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. And it's right across from uh, Magdalena Homes, next to this Sorry Sorry store. And look at these babies. Look at these beautiful babies. And folks, here's a look around. Beautiful little check-in area. I'm gonna check in over here to the left. Beautiful music playing. And I'm gonna give you a look around back there at the pool. Lovely. Oh, check that old chandelier. So, very impressive entrance here. Alright, folks, so, uh, we just brought the trike around, and you'll come out that door right there. You know, the pool's on the other side. That's the main building. But if you're going to stay in the beachfront rooms, it's easier for us just to drive a trike. Just to bring the trike here and unload. And here we go. And we're going to come all the way down, I think, to room four. My sweet gear. Look at Fatima. Fatima is such a wonderful mother. And Jason's got Forrest G down there. And here's a look around. 
And so you can see this is this is why I wanted to bring the babies because they got plenty of room to play in this grass and we can enjoy the, the breeze, the view. Beautiful day. Alright, I'm gonna give you a look around the room here, hopefully before we trash it out. Slip now, boy D. Boy G sleeping? Yeah, sleeping. Hey buddy. <laughs> We're at the beach. Ah. Hey, wake up, buddy. Alright folks, look around room four. And I don't mind all our trash here, but uh, it's got a nice little desk. Uh, looks like we have our own router here. So hopefully the Wi-Fi is good. And there you go. Air count over there. Dial zero for the front desk. Hurry up. And okay, got a couple safes. And here you go, CR. All right, so. There's your look around the beachfront rooms here. The CRC look, 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 look like rooms. Yes. Room. Well, you can sleep in here, honey. You sleep in the CR. Sleep here. <laughs> yeah, if I get drunk, I'll sleep in the CR. Okay, folks. So, the beachfront room with a, with, a, with a view. Look at that. I can see Castle Island. A couple ships. We got a breeze coming through. Perfect. Again, here's a look at the grounds. Put the shoes back on the fourth G. All right, babies. And we'll take them to the pool later on. And let me just give you a look around the spot. And there you go, there's Jason. And again, that's the main building back there. You got the roadway in between. <laughs> Yay! Papa's babies. <laughs> She's fast. Put Forrest G down, baby. Put him down. Where is she? Run, honey, run. Run, don't get her. Look at that, that's not nice, honey. Man, look who it is. It's the beautiful Janice. The beautiful Maria. Beautiful, da da da. Yeah. Look at these beautiful ladies, my friends. Little Force G is knocked down in the room. He's sleeping. And it looks like he's got some rain clouds rolling in. I told these ladies, I told these ladies to bring uh, the bikinis, but I think they both need a tea bag. So you got that. Uh, 
Damn cat over there. That cat over there trying to get our food. What you got? Three for three for one hundred? Folks, this is not the first time this lady's been on uh, on my YouTube channel. Last time was at the Blue Rock, right? Can you tell everybody your name? Name. 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 Where are, you, where are you from? Here in Subic. You from Subic? How's business? No business today because it's a virus. No Not business good. because of the virus. Uh, but that's okay because I on November fourth the virus is over. No, yes, it's finished. The so folks, these, these ladies, these ladies are over here. Now I've brought them so many bracelets. These are my kids, Maybe I brought I bought both of you some bracelets last week. Yeah. And I to see some. What, baby? The wallet. Okay, so that's two bucks. Uh, it's okay. Uh, one fifty. The bird. The bird. One fifty. Bird's one fifty. That's three bucks on that bird. Uh, three for one. Uh, three. One hundred. Three. One hundred. One hundred for three. Three hundred. Three hundred. This one, the bird. One hundred each. No. I didn't see it too much. You know what that button does? That calls the police. Wait, huh? When you push that button, the police come. I know, I know. America? No, baby, when the auntie checked us in, she said if you have an emergency, you push that button and the police come. Wait, police? Okay, well, when they come, I, I'm going to tell them who pushed the oh, button. Maria. No, it wasn't Maria. Wait, she's the one who pushed it. It was you ladies. Oh, Maria, na. Oh, you're the one These beautiful ladies, my goodness. Thank you, my friend. How you doing? Watch some mud, Maria. Poolside. Yeah. So keep this pool clean. Look at that. Clean. So there you go. These are the poolside rooms if you're interested. Come 
down here and get a table by these stairs. How about right here, ladies? Where? <laughs> Folks, I want to welcome everybody. Maybe I didn't welcome you uh, at the beginning of the video. But I want to welcome you to this video, basically calling it, I don't know, 48 hours at the Wild Orkin. So far, we're having a great time here. This property, you know, spread out. Uh, got some nice green spaces, plenty of parking out front. Beautiful pool. Obviously a beautiful pool. Uh, the pool's clean. They got that pump running uh, the whole time I've been here. Of course, we're across the street in the beachfront room because I wanted to, uh, you know, I wanted to look at the beach. But the great thing about this property, <laughs> you know, is this pool. How can you beat that? And you can get those uh, those rooms right there, right in front of the pool. Now, I wasn't gonna go with those in case one of the babies somehow or another got the door open, you know, and stumbled down the steps into the pool. We're better off over there on the beach, I think. Love the view. The, uh, the restaurant has limited hours, as does the bar, which is to be expected, you know, with this, uh, with this BS, shit that's going on in the world right now the madness I just call it the madness right with the madness the madness that's going on in the world you got to expect it you know these hotels are you know the governments around the world got their fucking foot on the neck of everybody in the tourism business it just won't let up you know why because people in government don't give a fuck they get their paycheck it doesn't matter if the economy is good bad ugly great tanking it don't matter government people get their fucking check they have no empathy because they don't walk in our shoes all right enough about that most hotels most hotels you're not allowed to bring in food from the outside right they want you to eat in their restaurants okay that's a given uh, but here since the restaurant is closed you know the re uh, if it's outside the restaurant hours you said no problem you can bring food so that's okay. Now here on Beloit Beach, you do have several food options. You know, if you start up there by the trike place, you've got that little local uh, Carinderia, which is quite popular with everybody. With uh, locals, expats, tourists, everybody hits that little corner place right in front of, uh, uh, not Burger Junction, Angel Burger. And then you have the Angel Burger place right there next to 7-Eleven. Uh, come on around the horn, Blue Rocks restaurant is open. You've got uh, uh, Treasure Island. Let's see, Viking, I think, has got pizza, right? So you have several food options here, a local Carinderia. But, you know, a lot of these things, I guess all of them, they shut down, you know, 8 or 9 o'clock because of the curfew. So if you're going to come over here, don't, you know, don't get hungry at like 11 o'clock at night because I don't know if anything's open. Maybe that... Maybe that Burger Junction is open late. I, I don't know. But, you know, make sure you got some food before 9 o'clock or so. So, uh, again, shout out to uh, the young lady working the front desk. Um, you know, sweet lady, great check-in process, no problem. Uh, shout out to housekeeping and security. Everybody here is friendly, folks. I'm loving it. I'm loving my stay here. And... They got a pool table up there too. If you're into shooting pool, there's a pool table right there in the bar. And uh, we may shoot some pool later on. But probably what I'm going to do tonight, I'm going to take the ladies over to Treasure Island to get some dinner. 
you know, just because we can get a table right there on the, you know, over, right there on the sand, so to speak, not in the sand, but, you know, get a table right there and watch the uh, sun go down and get some good food over there. And then maybe tomorrow night we do the Blue Rock. You know, just trying to give you guys a tour uh, here in Beloit to let you know what's going on, what's open. The other day when I was at Treasure Island, I think it was, was I at Treasure Island? And yeah, one of the places, there's, there's scuba trips going out. And when I was reading one of the uh, releases from the, the Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases, you know, the government that puts out these resolutions to open shit back up or close shit down, it says something about scuba operators are allowed to reopen and, and what have you. So I have seen some scuba trips going out. That's a good thing. And, you know, coming up on the elections in the U.S., it's anybody's guess what's going to happen next week in America. Uh, who the hell knows? But whatever, whatever all y'all crazy-ass folks over in America do, just leave the COVID-19 shit out of the debate because if y'all do anything over there, Biden gets elected and fucking makes masks mandatory. It just makes it makes the rest of the world uh, worse for the rest of us. It's pretty qu quite clear that if Biden gets elected, you're going to be wearing a fucking diaper on your face for the next goddamn decade. With support for local lockdowns. Now, if you give me some candidates and everything else apart, everything else apart, but a motherfucker says he's going to lock me down and make me wear a fucking diaper on my face, I'm, you're not, I'm not voting for you, dog. I don't care what your other policies say. You're taking away my freedoms. You're taking away the freedoms of my children. You know, you're an enemy of my children. So if, uh, if Biden thinks he's going to come up with this uh, nationwide mandate, for wearing masks, you're an en enemy of my children. You're my enemy, motherfucker. And it's not him. He's just an old man with Alzheimer's that they keep propping up, and I feel sorry for him. But when I say Biden, I'm talking about that 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 camp. So all other all other political issues aside, you lock me down. Yeah, you're my enemy. Make me wear a motherfucking diaper on my face. You're my enemy. And you're the enemies of my children. That's how I feel about it. Fuck, I got off on a political tangent. I'm going to have to just edit that out because I'm trying to do a wonderful video here. You know, chilling out. Yeah, folks, so uh, we got, we got Janice here on the scene. Uh, great lady, folks. She's a really great lady. Just great with the babies. Her and Fatima are like BFF, best friends forever. Besties. So she's chilling with us for a couple days here. And I know, how, how can you not love to look at Janice on the video? My goodness, Janice is beautiful. And, well, Fatima is beautiful too. So I feel just, uh, just truly blessed today. Nice cool breeze coming through. Had those typhoons roll through, and you know, I know a lot of people, their power's out for a while. You know, but hey, I've rode that shit out many times. It's just about where you're at and where, you know, where, what part the damn storm hits is who's going to be affected. Luckily, we're, we weren't affected other than just, you know, brown out conditions during when, when they come through and the wind and crap. So we're pretty fortunate. Oh, one more thing. Internet here at the Wild Orchid is on time. Now listen, I can't guarantee that it's on time in every room because it's all about how far the router is or where they put localized routers. I have a router in my room out by the beach and I'm batting like 25 down and 25 up. So if you're not familiar for the average person, that's perfect. You can make phone calls, you can stream videos, you can do what you want to do, 25 and 25. Sitting right here by the pool, it's like 65 and 65. So they've got fiber piped in here. Uh, you know, when you read some of these reviews, a lot of the reviews are dated. If you go to go to what happens, like the last reviews are January 2020, 
and obviously they ain't had no reviews until like October 2020, so you got that gap. So if you go back and look at last year's reviews, well maybe some of these hotels have upgraded their Wi-Fi since then. You know, I read one review that said, oh, the Wi-Fi was sketchy. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. It ain't sketchy here. They got fiber rocking in this place. Plenty fast enough for the average person, and it's fast enough for me to do a live stream. I'm probably going to do a live stream from this pool tomorrow. Uh, so, thumbs up on the Wi-Fi. Now, again, you know, each individual room, I don't know, but if you come sit down at this damn pool, Wi-Fi is on time. On time. That means I can stay. It means I can stay here indefinitely. You know, but if I go to a hotel and they don't have jam up Wi-Fi, I can't stay more than a night. I gotta roll out. An average person, they ain't staying too long if the Wi-Fi ain't working. <laughs> Folks, I'm gonna tell you, life, life is hard for me. I got my two ladies rolling with me and I got four more ladies in the pool looking beautiful. What can I do? I mean, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I'm just, I you know, I got my kids here. My kids are having a great time. And folks, it, it was just time. It was so important to me. You know, these two babies have been locked down. Forrest G especially during, you know, his formative uh year i mean you know your baby your baby you kind of lay around and just poop and eat right but he's going on too he's been locked down in prison because of the stupidity this madness you know and i said you know what I, I don't i don't give a damn about no checkpoints no lockdowns i don't give a rat's ass i'm taking my baby to the beach for two days and that's just the way it's gonna be and so we're here and it's just beautiful. My baby's here, the two ladies. I got beautiful ladies floating around in the pool. Folks, Hugh Hefner ain't got shit on me. He ain't got nothing on me. You know? Playboy Mansion didn't have a pool this big. I don't think he had ladies as beautiful as I got right behind me. I don't know if you can see him or not, but I can see him. If you're not a subscriber on my channel, folks, let me just ask you. Bottom right hand corner of your screen, somewhere right in there. Hit that overstay road sign. If you get on board my channel, food, beer, visas, you know, travel, bad behavior, beautiful women. Just a slice of my life, the way I live it. And they say if you don't ask a person, you have to ask a person three times or they won't subscribe or give you a like. I don't really give a shit about them likes. I never really focus on that. But if you don't mind, if Click, a, click a up or down. It helps us with the algorithm. We appreciate it. But I really like to have you as a, as a subscriber. You know what I mean? And I don't really call you guys subscribers. I call you friends. You know, 27,000. What are we at? 600 friends here on the channel. My goodness. I want to thank each and every one of you that click that button and hit that bell. Listen to my voice. Watch our videos. Thank you very much, my friends. Um, you watching my videos allows me to live this lifestyle. And I know a lot of you are over there in America right now and it's snowing and it's ice and damn Colorado, wildfires, there's damn civil unrest in the cities, chaos, people, you know, looting Walmarts. I don't, that's all I'm gonna say about that, you know what I mean? And I just living this simple life over here. As long as I got a damn cold beer, two women, my babies, some barbecue. I'm pretty fucking happy. I ain't, I ain't too hard to please. I don't think that's too much to ask. You know what I mean? Maybe in America it is. But not in my life. That's all I need. Mmm. All right, folks. We're gonna we're gonna pack up this little set. We're gonna move off to the next one, probably to Treasure Island. Show you what the food options are over there. You check with the ladies. Ladies, are you ladies getting hungry? Nope. Nope. Honey, you ain't never told me that you you weren't hungry. 
Why? That's fine. Something's up with that. Something's up with that. I'm gonna get to the bottom of that. She said she wasn't hungry. She ain't never said that. Never. In the history of Fatima Dome, she has never said I'm not hungry. All right, moving to the next location. Folks, on the way to Treasure Island, try to get some food. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. These ladies, they're so quick to go. They don't know where they're going. They're walking out to the. Uh, they're walking out to the street. I said, we ain't going to the street. We're going down the beach, ladies. Folks, they're just looking around. That's the uh, Blue Rock Floating Bar. It's beached over there. Check out my previous video. So we're just coming down the beach. Mostly everybody on the beach today is locals, kids, you know. The occasional foreign dude. Hello. Hello. Yeah. That's so funny. Everybody here. You walk down the down the beach with a camera, walk down the street, everybody hollers, vloggers, vloggers. A lot of trash on the beach. I'm telling you, everybody, listen, if I lived here, I would gather some type of coalition to pay some guys every morning to clean this trash off the beach. That is exactly what I would do. If I moved to Beloit Beach, I would clean up this trash problem. I promise. You know what I mean? I mean, every morning, just have like five kuyas come out here with some trash bags and pick up all this trash. That's all you got to do. So check out these waves. I mean, I've never seen this big of waves here on Beloit Beach. We got some heavy wave activity today. Oh my goodness. What you looking at? Are you like them stairs up there? Yeah. yeah, those stairs are pretty cool. You got this spiral staircase, goes up to the roof. Pretty cool. You okay, sweetie? Hey, Come on, sweetie. This little girl's hungry. When she's hungry, she says, uh-uh. She wants to eat. Uh -uh, she wants to eat. <laughs> Hello, my friend. No cooking bagaong. I know you love to eat the bagaong, but you cannot cook the bagaong in the house. All right, folks, here at Treasure Island. All right, folks, so Forrest G threw the bottle in the pool, and this young gentleman over there fished it out for us. And shout out to him. Thank you for doing so. And folks, I got a big order. I got some chicken wings coming. And the lady asked me, she said, do you want them grilled or fried? And I said, you know what? The ladies always eat fried. Bring them grilled. And she said, they're absolutely delicious. I went with some nacho supreme. And I went with uh, calamari and some garlic rice. Mango shake on time as usual. I got a nice cold SMB over there. 
And Maria Mercedes is so hungry, she keeps saying uh-uh, which means uh, she's hungry. She doesn't want us to eat. And folks, I'm going to tell you what. You know, I got two lovely ladies with me. Look at this girl right here. My goodness. Look. How can you not fall in love with that girl? Oh my goodness. Look, I just never get tired of that sunset over those mountains. I never get tired of that sunset. It's just, it's just absolutely beautiful. You're underneath a palm tree. Let me show you. If you if you don't love coconuts, folks, and you don't love a palm tree, I, I really don't know what you're doing with your life. Look at them coconuts. The buco, my goodness. So again, just give you a, a look around here. Yes, there's a lot of trash on the beach. Yes, I could fix that fucking problem. I may do it. Get a little coalition, take up a collection. Bring a five-man crew over here every every morning, every morning and every night, and clean up all the trash. And we'll employ some people, and we'll beautify Beloit Beach. Because ain't nobody else taking the reins on this fucking, uh, this problem. I mean, look at this. It ain't rocket science. Give me five dudes and uh, some wheelbarrows, and we'll clean this shit up. Simple. And then everybody, everybody will love the place. All right, lady, so uh, how's the mango shaped? It's delicious. Yeah. And what what does Maria think about the mango shape? Mmm. She she thinks it's delicious too. Yeah, she said. Mmm. Sati, you want to go to the mountain? You want to go to the mountain? Come on. Let's go there. Alright folks, so this is the nachos, I told them extra jalapenos. That's the calamari with some delicious looking sauce. Uh, I guess I should have ordered two orders of uh, garlic rice. I thought I was ordering a big plate, my bad. No, no, no sweetie, don't. No, that's too hot, don't eat that. This beautiful lady, my goodness. Now folks, this is the 16 piece uh, grilled wings. Oh my, oh my goodness, God. thank you very thank much, you. Dawn. Thank Enjoy. you so much. <laughs> All right, honey, that oh. looks delicious. All right, let's eat, ladies. Let's eat. What you think, Fort G? Looking good? Good. How's that, Maria? Is that delicious? Now, folks, let me give a shout out to my new friend here from Alaska. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much uh, for you and everybody up there in Alaska who watches our videos and listens to my boys. All right, folks, and I went in and I found this unauthorized whitening cream. And wife number one knows that I don't allow whitening cream in my kingdom because I like dark women. The darker, the better. So she made an unauthorized purchase of this whitening cream. And I got my man Emmanuel here on the scene. Hey man, give that to your wife. That's some type of whitening something, but I don't allow that shit to go down to my house, man. So I was gonna throw it in the trash. I don't even know what it is, but if it's whitening, I don't allow it because I like dark, dark, dark lady. How is she gonna use this? I don't know. I don't even know what it is, but when I saw the words whitening, it's out of here. Don't so, use it from the waist down, that's for sure. Well, yeah, I wouldn't put it to the waist down. Folks, now he got some real chicharrones tonight. Oh, boom! Special chicharron from Pampanga. All right, man, this is what I want you to do. All right, I want to buy a few of these for my ladies, but then I, what I want you to do is uh, 
It sends some over to the ladies just to the left of Midnight Rambler. What's the name of that bar? Outback. Outback. That's what I want you to do, man. Send some love over to Outback. So let me put my camera down and we'll negotiate. And, and I want you to deliver that to Outback, okay? Old teams? Yeah, we're going. We're going to. We're going to get something for the ladies over there. I come. What's going on? Okay, you may proceed. <laughs> Folks, this gentleman right here is getting the coconut straight down from the tree. All right. Ah. Twist that thing about 18 times. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Maybe it's five <laughs> That's a big one, folks. That's like a bowling ball. If that thing falls out of the tree and hits you in the head, oh my goodness, look how big them bucos are. My goodness. You don't want one of them to hit you in the head. That's like that's like a bowling ball coming down. There's some smaller ones up there. But those things were right, they were ready to roll. All right. All right, so I gotta get back to negotiating with a man over here. All right, friends, so you see this gentleman Chopping up the, the buco. Got an expert chop going on there. I did not put the bucket on in there. You're the one who bought it? Well, I didn't yeah. know she put bucket on in there. Oh, we don't have choice. We need to put in there. Well, ladies, when I went to get my beer, my beer, the outside of my beer smelled like the purple nasty. <laughs> Just wait. Just finish. We finish that later. Just make sure you don't try to eat that bugger on in my room. <laughs> my goodness, folks. I'm going to tell you right now. Folks, if you ain't never smell the purple nasty, the bugger on. The bugger on is a nasty, nasty... It's a fermented shrimp slash fish slash krill. I don't know. Ladies, do you do you even know what bugaong is? That's a small shrimp. Okay, she said that's small shrimp, right? That's her definition. She's leaving out the purple nasty part. Okay. So it's a fermented shrimp paste. I don't know how it gets purple. There's got to be some type of coloring or something going on. Hey, man, no jumping on the bed, dude. Hey, man, this is a private residence, man. So, folks, it's a never-ending battle against these ladies bringing the bugger on into my life and messing up my, my sense of smell. I think... Oh, I, enough talking about bugging on. But I'm going to tell you, we're having a great stay here. We really are. And the biggest thing that we all noticed is how quiet it is. All we, all, all we hear is the waves. All we hear is the waves. Well, now you hear loud Filipinas, but... All we hear is the waves, and this ceiling fan is just wonderful. And then we realize how noisy it is over at the penthouse suite with that damn dog barking all night. You know, the neighbor's dog. Well, there's actually two sides. Got <laughs> both sides of the place, there's dogs. They bark 24 hours a day. You know if you've listened to my videos, being on the balcony, those darn dogs barking all the time. So add that with the tricycles, people talking. Police coming through, hitting their whoop, whoop, you know, telling people to get off the streets, whatever. Folks, it is so quiet here. It just is. All, all I hear, all I heard was these waves until the whole crew got up. And now, you know, you're listening to two babies and two Filipinas. But before that, so peaceful here at the Wild Orchid. There's a ship out here. Let me see if I can give you a gander. 
a ship out that's all lit up. Come over here, pull this back. Yeah, it's out there. Got a couple ships. There's one over there. Let's see if I can zoom in. I don't no, no. know. Just yeah, right there. there we go. Got a ship right there. <laughs> Just to the left. No, no, no. We're on the island. And got another one right there. Just a beautiful night here. On below a beach at the wild Oregon with these two beautiful. Hey, shh, hey man. It's a private residence, man. And this beautiful girl here making. What you making, man? Put some juice for Maria? Yeah. It's a beautiful night, my friends. She don't want cover. Boy, Papa's babies. Hey, Papa's babies. What you eating, Maria? What is that? You don't want to share with four sheep? Hello. The puno na kayo sa ano dito. Oi, ate na kakabulon yan ni. Oi, stand up. Forest G, don't, <laughs> don't bite at me. Ah! Oh, hey, nobody in still here will warm me up. Yup, yup, yup. Anan pa yan. Full moon. It's a full moon. Full moon. I don't know if I saw this one. Who's Hell, I don't even know. Three, four in the morning. Maybe about. Maybe about three in the morning. So I can get the moon in the background, get that shadow. Yes, yeah, so I think it. I think it's about three in the morning. Pretty sure the first baby to wake up was Forrest G. Man, just couldn't get him to go back to bed. He's just jumping on his mama's head. Of course, she just keeps sleeping. So he got up. And then, of course, the ladies got up and woke Maria up. So they've been there eating some uh, potato chips. And they've been chomping at the bit to break out that bug on home. But I, I told him, hell no, don't, don't break that out in the room. So it's just such a beautiful night. You know, we've had those typhoons come through, but now it's just a clear night. You can see all the stars. Got the full moon. Now there's a full moon over Tulsa. I hope that it's shining on you. <laughs> what a wonderful, perfect night. I don't know, I guess because of the typhoons, there's more wave action here, you know. The typhoon from what was it? Well, I don't even remember the name of it, Papito. But there's just a lot of waves. It seems like there's more waves than usual, and so it's perfect for for sleeping and just you know you're at the beach. Great meal last night at, at Treasure Island. Shout out to the cook. I didn't get to meet you personally, but I told the waitresses to uh, make sure they extended our thanks to the chef back there. Wow, good food. And you know what? Every time I've been to Treasure Island and ate food, it's always excellent all the time. So I recommend dinner. And you're gonna stay here on, on Boy Beach. You gotta go to Treasure Island and eat, uh, eat lunch or dinner at least once because the food's good.
How can you, uh, how can you not love nice like this? Everything aligned. Everything aligned. It didn't align because of these typhoons. Then all of a sudden, everything aligned where I could just bring everybody here. You know, Janice was able to come with this. You know, there's a lot. There's a big story behind that. But I got Janice here helping take care of the babies. And Janice is such a sweet girl. So good with the children. So I think everybody's having a great time, my friends. Again, shout out to my buddies in Alaska. I think my buddy said there's like almost 300 of you guys up there uh, working together that all have uh, families here in the Philippines. Thank you very much for watching our videos. Thank you very much. You know what I just realized? I guess just something I never thought about. But I'm sitting there looking out there trying to find the Castle Island. And the only reason you know it's right there is because I can't see the lights behind it over at Grande Island. And I was like, man, if you don't know if you don't know Civic Bay and you don't know that that Castle Island is there at night, and you come ripping across here in a damn boat, I'm just surprised more people, whether, well, I mean, you know, most everybody here they know the bay. But my point is that there's no light on that island. If you're not paying attention, coming through here at night, it's very easy to beat your ass on that little castle island. I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often. You know, people just not paying attention, but. I don't know. I see a red light like to the right of it. But I can't tell I can't tell if that flashing red light is way beyond it or if it's the island. I don't know. But I can tell you this. You don't want to crash into that little island at fucking speed. You certainly don't want to do that. sitting up on this wall you know this little wall is like I don't know three foot high like a little sea wall so I just feel a tap and I'm like oh there's my little girl yeah you getting sleepy hmm you wanna go back to sleep get some more sleep oh thank you sweetie oh so sweet all right so here's the night shot feature and it works in certain uh, certain conditions where it is a little bit better. There's Janice in the background. She's rocking for us, G. I don't know if you can see her. She's sleeping, folks. That's some kind of beautiful right there. Good morning, my friends. Beautiful, peaceful morning here on Civic Bay. Let's give you a slow pan around. I got a couple fishermen, a couple, well, four boats of fishermen. Make that five little tiny boats of fishermen. And just look at that beautiful sunshine starting to hit those mountains over there. And I'm going to zoom in. And I realized yesterday that when I did my panoramic view, I was going way too fast. So what I'm going to do is do some slow pans. And that's looking down toward the end of Beloy Beach. The gentleman going out fishing. Just look at that sunshine. 
when that sunshine beats down on those mountains. Hell yeah. He is moving out. Pan left a little bit more. See what kind of activity we got going on at the shipyard over there. zoom out folks a lot of times footage in these videos hey good morning how are you I'm okay. a lot of this footage is for me and maybe you're maybe later when the ladies wake up they got they got a whole refrigerator full of mango all right you too One of the mango ladies, but folks, we got so much mango in there, I can't put any more in the ref. Yeah, so I'm impressed by the mountains and the sunshine. Just don't, I never get tired of looking at mountains. That's one of the ships last night, it was all lit up. All right, and that one there was lit up too, it was beautiful. That was probably the best light show. Looking out across there last night was that ship. I got another vessel there. And got a big super yacht over there. I'm not sure who that belongs to, but I'm sure somebody listening to my voice probably knows. You know, lifestyles of the rich and famous. Everybody's still sleeping. I went in there to get me a beer out of the ref. They're all four, as they say over here, knocked down. <laughs> they're all, they're all out of it. Jason was supposed to bring his kids at six. I set my alarm, you know, about 5:30. He said he was gonna bring them at six. He hasn't hadn't showed up yet. Maybe he got sidetracked. What we were talking about yesterday is, you know, the reason I brought, the reason I wanted to bring the kids over here is just, just to get the hell out of the house, just to get away from the goddamn lockdown. And I really didn't say anything to him about it. I just said, you know, I'm going to the beach. And then yesterday he comes out here and he looks around and he says, man, I got to bring my kids out here. He said, They've been in the house for months, just you know, playing on the damn cell phones. They, they don't, they don't go anywhere. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, folks, when I when when I first brought them out here, you saw in the video, you know, Maria's running around, Force G's crying and screaming, because <laughs> his only scenery since this madness started has been over there at Times Square. That's his only scenery. The scenery don't change. 2020 has just been a year of absolute madness. In <laughs> so many ways. Oh, so I was going to tell a story. I, I put the camera up here so I could tell a story. And I fucking just started talking about something totally different. So last night, you know, getting a little scruffy. I was like, hey, when you ladies give me a shave right quick. Oh, I know I'm horrible. Folks, I don't shave. You know what I mean? That's what I got ladies for. Simple things like that. 
I got my own salon. Anytime I want to hair my haircut or shave, that's what I got my wife for. She does a great job. You know, I go to the barber shop every now and then just to uh, for the social event, right? See what's going on, stimulate the local economy. But my wife, she knows how to cut hair, shave. You know, she basically got my own little private salon. Hell, she even does my nails. Uh, Fatima, if she wanted to. She could op open up a little salon. Last night, she's like, I didn't bring a razor. I said, why not? She said, well, I threw the old one away. And it was two good ones that I bought when I was in the States. So this is a word of advice. You come to Southeast Asia, don't buy a cheap razor. Don't do it. Bite the bullet, buy the damn Expensive razor over 7-Eleven. You know, of course, the damn thing will last a week or two, depending on how scraggly your damn beard is, obviously. But so they didn't have no, they didn't have no razor last night. So Janice goes to the sorry sorry store down the street somewhere, comes back with these two razors, and they were like a dollar, like fifty cents a piece. You know, the more yellow-looking things with no, no brand on it. So Fatima makes a swipe across my face, and folks, it felt like it felt like somebody pulled out 50 whiskers at once with a pair of tweezers. And I was like, ah! Oh! <laughs> and then, you know, oh, all right, well maybe that was just a, I don't know. She hit another swipe. Ow! Oh! Folks, that's the most fucking pain I've had in a long time. My goodness, that damn razor. Holy crap, it wouldn't cut a damn piece of hot butter. So, I motored through it because I was drunk. Well, about halfway. But she hit, she started trying to hit that mustache, folks. I couldn't handle it. I said, that's it. Get rid of them goddamn razors. Somebody's humping up to 7-Eleven in the morning and getting a proper razor. Got to. So, anyhow, my beard is looking like all jacked up and splotchy. It's because of that 45 peso two pack of yellow razors from Sorry Sorry Stores. Horrible. My God. <laughs> Anyhow, I don't know if you found that interesting, but that pain I endured last night for about 10 minutes, I guess it was worth talking about. Well, folks, my, my heart goes out. The uh, the vendors, you know the vendors that walk around here, you know various places you go to. And what these vendors here told me is that they're all from Zamboanga. And I'm not saying there aren't some locally, but every every vendor you talk to, you say, "Where are you from?" I'm from Zamboanga. And if you're not familiar, Zamboanga is down on uh, Mindanao, like one of the southernmost big islands of the Philippines, southern part of the Philippines. And so you talk to all these street vendors, and they all say, I'm from Mindanao. And then you ask them, well, where's this stuff made? You know, the bracelets, the necklace, you know, this stuff here. Well, not this. This came out of a this here. Where's it made? It's made in Mindanao. So I'm sitting there thinking in my head, why the fuck would people from Mindanao come all the way up to damn Subi and they make this shit in Mindanao? Now a lot of folks from Mindanao work up here because there's not as many jobs down there, right? So you have to go where the work is. I got it. Okay, I understand why people from Mindanao come up here to work. But I was like, wait a minute. You know, there's people around here that need jobs. You mean to tell me people around here can't make souvenirs and people around here can't walk around on the beach and sell souvenirs? Uh, you know, why do we have to have folks come all the way up from Mindanao and make these trinkets all the way down in Mindanao to come up here to Subi? And then I'm thinking the logistics of it. And the cat yesterday said, well, there's a boat that comes up every three days. I guess a ship that comes up every three days 
This is what he's telling me. I don't know if this is true or not. I'm just telling the story what the man told me. He said, there's, there's one big boss. There's one big boss in Mindanao. And so he sends the people and the trinkets up here. And a ship comes up every three days for a resupply. And that's how they're here. So if you kind of look at it like that, if there's a ship that already runs between, you know, down there and, and Subic Bay, yeah, what's the big deal? Throw a few boxes of trinkets on there, a couple, couple new uh, vendors, and that's his transportation network, and then it's not a big deal. Now, and what sparked this was yesterday he brought out a coin. And I don't know anything about coins. Uh, I'm not a coin collector. I don't know if a coin is real or fake, what it's worth. Don't care. I'm not a coin collector. Don't give a fuck about coins. Okay? So when I first started coming to the Philippines, you know, these guys would come around and, and they're selling this stuff, but then they pull out a coin. And it looks like an old, you know, U.S. coin. I don't know, Susan B. Anthony, fucking uh, silver dollar. Fuck, I, I told you. I don't fucking know anything about coins. And the story was, and you can go back to one of my videos from a couple years ago when I was hanging out with these cats at that little orange sorry sorry store. It's probably three years ago, maybe. And the story is that they, where do these coins come from? No, they're real. Where do they come from? Well, my grandfather found a shipwreck down in Mindanao. And they're diving on that ship and they're getting these coins out of the ship. So if you've never been here before, it's an interesting fucking story. You're thinking, all right, well, there's you know some damn, some damn old ship down there, and they're digging around in it, and occasionally finding coins. It's very interesting and mesmerizing and intriguing, and you want to believe this story. And you know, then to come to realize most of these coins are fake. I don't want to say all of them because I don't want to. I told you, I don't know shit about coins, but most of them are fake. They manufacture them in a damn uh, metal shop somewhere, and they throw that interesting story. Come from a shipwreck down in Mindanao. Now, the reason that he caught me off guard years ago when I first heard the story was, well, I'm not in Subic, or, or excuse me, I'm not in Mindanao, I'm in Subic. So it'd be very easy for the guy to say, Oh, well, we got it off one of the ships out here. You know, there's ships, uh, dozens of sunken ships here in Subic Bay, the great dive sites. So it would have been a very plausible story to say, oh, we got them off that ship over there. You know, when people go scuba dive, they find these coins. That's pretty believable, right? But he didn't come up with that story. He come up with a story that it come from a sunken ship down in Mindanao. So he kind of like upped the mystique. You're like, God damn, man, how did this coin get all the way here from Mindanao? I gotta buy this, you know, this might be valuable. Well, not me, because I, I don't know shit about coins. So he busted one out yesterday. And it was the same story. The coin come from Mindanao. And I should have let him keep talk, kept talking, but I cut him off. He's like, yeah, it came from in and out. I said, let me guess, from a shipwreck down there that your grandfather dives on? And he just kind of looked at me and I said, all right, man, let me ask you, what, you know, what, why, why is everybody from in and out? And then that's what he told me. You know, there's just a central boss that uh, sends them all up here with the goods, and that's the story. But again, the perplexing thing to me is why don't some local people here manufacture some locally produced souvenirs and locally local people from Subic Bay, well, from Subic along the pole, around Subic Bay walk on the, on the beach selling stuff made right here in Subic. I don't get it. Maybe there's some internal politics and um, people have territorial rights to walk up and down the beach. I don't fucking know. I don't know. But I asked the guy, I said, well, if, is the, the big boss in Mindanao, like if I go to Boracay and I see people selling, selling these trinkets on the beach, I said, is it the same big boss from Zamwanga? Uh, you know, same guy will send people to Boracay? Or he, he's like, no, it's a different boss. 
I don't know. But the these folks that come by, folks, your heart goes out to them. There's no tourists here. I don't want to say no. There's very, very few tourists. I, you can see there's a handful of people here on the beach when it should be, you know, a good crowd right now. And they walk around on the beach all day trying to sell this stuff, and there's not many people here to sell to, and there's probably a dozen of them. So they're walking up and down this beach all day, every day. Maybe two or three of them get a sale. You know, once every few days. My heart goes out to them, it's sad. And that's why I try to, uh, you know, I can't, I can't buy from every one of them every day. But every day, if I'm here, I buy I buy from one of them, whoever, whoever the luck of the draw, you know. And it's sad because once you buy from one of them, the rest of them come up. And they're pushing the same stuff. They all have the same stuff. And you're like, look, man, I just, I just bought some stuff from this lady over here, you know. What can I do? And they don't get it. They just don't understand. If, if I bought from her, why don't I buy from me? You know, why don't I buy from... It's just, uh, it's sad, you know. But I do try at least, uh, you know, when I'm over here, I'm going to buy something from somebody but I can't buy something from 12 people every time I come. So that gentleman there, he was here yesterday after the, the lady that came by and we brought, bought those three wallets. So he was over there sitting on the wall here like six something in the morning. And I guess he just saw me talking to the camera and decided to go on and come back later. But he'll be back. He'll be back, he'll be stalking me out. The minute he sees me go to that wall, he'll, he'll be there. He's gonna be the first guy. You know, I used to not buy anything from these folks. And I was sitting in a bar one time. This is another story. I was sitting in a, a bar. Well, I'll tell you exactly where I was at. I was sitting at Cheaters Bar on Burgo Street down in Makati. And I like that little bar just because of, uh, you know, the way it sits. I can sit there and people watch. Just to, I don't know. You know, you have your certain places that you like. So I'd like to go over to Cheers and I'd drink me a, a, a Sam Mig. What is Sam Mig Dry? I think that's what it was. They had them, so. I was sitting there one day and this was years ago when I was still on uh, Facebook. And I was just pl uh, pushing out posts talking about what people had offered to sell me. And I'm on Burgo Street, I'm in the middle of Makati, right one, in the middle of the city. And so like, I'm just saying what people, you know, I was just putting on there, no, I don't want to buy any Viagra. And then people were commenting, you know, and here comes another guy, you know, no, I don't want to buy a stun gun. You know, and then here comes another, another guy, no, I don't want to buy this. And I was just pushing them out, just letting people know what these vendors sell, you know, no, I don't want to buy a, a mattress. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, let me take another look at that samurai sword, you know, because the dude had a, had a cool samurai sword. Um, and I was just talking about how at times when you live in these certain areas and you get that stuff pushed in your face every day, every day, every day, and you just get tired of saying, no, thank you, my friend, no, thank you, my friend, no, thank you, my friend, no, thank you, no, thank you, no, thank you. Sometimes it does get a little old. And I think a lot of guys just ignore them. They don't even talk to them or they'll just, you know, some of them are pissed off and shoo them off. And I try to just stick to the no thank you, my friend, no thank you. And sometimes you have to say that 12 times before they understand you're not gonna buy a samurai sword or you're not gonna buy a bow and arrow or you're not gonna buy the blow gun that they're selling, right? Or the stun gun or the brass knuckles or the Camagra the Viagra, uh, the plants, the brooms, the, uh, the lounge chairs. People will walk around here selling literally everything. And you, as part of living in areas like this, you have to say no, no thank you, no thank you, no thank you, no thank you. 
So anyhow, I'm sitting on Burgos Street, you know, just no thank you, no thank you. And then this chick, shout out to you, Jennifer. I'll never forget this because the discussion was like, man, these guys are selling crazy stuff. You know, what are they? And out of the blue, this chick that I used to date, her name's Jennifer. Shout out to you, girl. I mean, you had some good times. She's from back in the States, Nashville. She said, why don't you just buy something? And I was like, what? Yeah, why don't you just buy something? Cheap bastard, you know, said something like that. And I just kind of laughed, but I thought about it. And I said, you know, maybe that would be the best course of action. Now, obviously, you can't buy something from everyone. But you can't at least pick out that one person. Pick out that one person and brighten up their day with a sale. Whether you need that fucking samurai sword or that stun gun that you can't get to take on the plane anyhow. You know, whether you need it or not. You pick out that one vendor. Have a conversation with them. Buy something from them. Brighten up their day. Put some money in their pocket so they can eat. And... If you don't need that item, just do what I do. I give it away. All these little bracelets, these trinkets, I just give them to the bar girls or I give them to the kids, whoever. And it brightens up somebody's day. Because when you, I guess when, you know, when you're sitting there at a bar, and you know what I'm talking about, you've been to places like Angeles City and you're sitting there at Kokomo's and dude just keeps coming by trying to sell you them t-shirts and that dude Always sticking them fucking fake Nikes in your face. You know who I'm talking about. Dude that walks around selling the shoes. Always, always sticking them same fucking shoes in your face. I love that dude. Because he's persistent. He won't take no for an answer. You can tell that man no. Well, he, pretty much all of them. But especially that dude in Angeles City selling them shoes. He can put them shoes in your face 12 times a day for a month. And you tell him no. The next day he's going to be smiling at you pushing them shoes on you. So when you get tired of saying no so much, sometimes you forget that's a person. That's a human being. That's a person that's having a fucking hard day. And for them to make a dollar is a hell of a lot more difficult than for us to make a dollar. So it's easy to forget and not show any empathy. Um, but when that girl said that, my old girlfriend, she said, why don't you buy something? Why don't you just buy something? Instead of sitting there and complaining about people bothering you while you're drinking your fucking beer. Buy something. I never forgot that. It just kind of changed my perspective on, you know, on the folks walking around trying to sell you this stuff. Stuff that you don't need, that you don't want. And when I say I'm bargaining with them, Let's talk about how much you pay for this stuff, okay? People ask me how much I pay for this. I don't remember, and I don't care. Because, like when I first started traveling, yeah, you're trying to get the best deals, you know, uh, just because it's your nature, right? You buy low, you sell high. You negotiate to get the best deal. I think that's, yeah, you can apply that to anything in life, especially if you're doing real estate, bigger deals like that. But when you're dealing with folks who are walking around out here every day, all day long, with a profit margin of maybe a dollar a day, two bucks a day, three if they're lucky. Some, day, some days they make no sales. Is it really about negotiating the hardest, the best price, the lowest price, the best deal? No. For me, it's about compassion. I know that these things are pennies. And it ain't probably ain't made in Zamboanga. They're just getting them from a box from a damn factory in China. I don't care. Because it's not the point anymore. You pick one. You uh, pick out some items. Negotiate a fair price. For both of you, but you don't beat them down. 
And basically, what are you doing? I'm not real fond of the word charity anymore, doing charity work. But if you want, the easiest descriptor is that you are doing charity work. If that makes sense to you. But obviously if somebody comes in here and says, hey, I'll sell you this for a thousand pesos. We're not, no. Don't let nobody hit a home run because then that becomes the expectation. Like in Cambodia. Everybody in Cambodia trying to hit a home run. National sport in Cambodia is ripping off fucking tourists. So anyhow, I told this big ass long story. I guess just to say, you know, you see these vendors walking up and down the street. Have some compassion, maybe. Show some empathy. Walk a mile in their shoes. And buy something. Buy something, even if it's a damn 100 peso bracelet. Because that, that means the difference of them being able to get something to eat for the day. Especially in these times. There you go, my friends. I just saw that gentleman peek his head around the corner over there. He's got no idea I'm talking about him. But he's peeking his head around the corner. He is not going to let anybody beat him when me and my ladies hit that wall. He's going to get that sale today. And I appreciate the conversation I had with you, my friend, yesterday. We had a good conversation. But I, you know... I set a limit on what I'm going to spend. I, I can't buy from everybody every day, but we had a good conversation. And I'm going to make sure that uh, we buy some uh, uh, anklets. He had some anklets. I said, you know what, them ladies look sexy as hell with them little anklets on there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jewel up there. I'm going to bling, bling up their, their ankles. I love anklets on a woman. So beautiful. What's the moral of the story? Next time you see if, see these vendors come around, fucking buy something. Cheap bastards. And I say that lovingly. They're still sleeping. I'll just check the news right quick. What does it say here? We got a severe tropical storm, Raleigh. Intensifies into a into a typhoon. And you know, shout out to my buddy uh, Raleigh, man. Hope you're doing well. And I, I, I can't remember, man. I think you sent me an email a while back. Said, say you're trying to come next year. But anyhow, they named a typhoon after you, brother. So, uh, severe tropical storm Riley intensified into a typhoon on Thursday night. It'd probably make landfall in central Luzon, Kazon area on Sunday evening or Monday morning. At a peak intensity of 165 to 185 kilometers per hour. Let's see, his last spotted 1,280 clicks east of central Luzon. Maximum sustained winds of 120. Okay, so the U.S. Navy Joint Typhoon Warning Center said that Raleigh will intensify into a super typhoon as it heads into the country's landmass on Saturday, October 31st. So to get uh, light to moderate over B. Cole, Eastern Visayas, till Friday morning. And they're saying it may follow uh, Quinta, is it Quinta or Quinta's track? So anyhow, folks, we got another typhoon coming. Super typhoon. But we'll be we'll be back over at the house by the time this thing hits. But yeah, so my actually my little timing on this little two-day trip over here worked out pretty damn good. We had nothing but sunshine yesterday. I'm looking last night, I mean, it was clear skies now with that bright moon and the lights right here, you know, we, we could see the stars, but not like if I was out camping on top of a mountain. I already got some of the vendors coming by hollering at me. So it's going to be another day in the swimming pool. Another day in the swimming pool with the babies. 
maximizing our time here at the beach and we'll be getting out of here just in time for the typhoon to come through so it's all good you know Halloween my experience around here Halloween I mean ain't really much uh, maybe we'll uh, do something for the babies over there at the house dress them up in costumes and I don't know take them trick-or-treating at the at our own place and get them get them in a costume dress them up and then come knock on the door if I can, I can give them some candy close the door I don't I don't know shit people even celebrate Halloween anymore I, I hell I don't know you know back when I was a kid you could go trick-or-treating by yourself and sometime in the 80s people started putting fucking poison and needles and glass and everything else and candy and fucking kidnapping people that shit didn't happen in the fucking 70s. It didn't happen in the 70s. It's like fucking the mid 80s when everything just fucking started turning to shit over in America. People ask me what do I miss about America? I'll tell you exactly, the fucking 70s. Let's go back to the 70s. The people older than me will probably say, fuck, I miss the 60s. Or I miss the 50s. I don't know, but I don't think back in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s, people put, you know, shit in kids Halloween candy to where it totally changed the way we package fucking candy and food and can't let kids go out and trick or treat in the fucking neighborhood. What the hell's the world coming to, you know? I have no idea what the world's coming to this fucking year 2020. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna wake up the crew, my friends. Thanks for joining me. Hey, I don't know if I'm gonna chop this into two videos or make this one epic fucking three hour video i might do it but bottom right hand corner of your screen if you hit that overstay road sign get on board my channel i would certainly appreciate it big shout out to all 27,000 600 and something where are we at 650 maybe 27 650 of my friends here on the channel i took the time to click the uh, subscribe button and hit that bell thank you very much my friends nothing like a cold beer in the morning watching the sun come up I'm on number two and my crew ain't even woke up yet come on folks this is a barefoot bar and barbecue Captain Ron's now it's closed right now but just to give you a look around Yeah, we're in the good times, had a band going on up there. And this is where we came, uh, my buddy Crazy Mike. And several other ladies came and got some uh, great uh, tuna steaks. Yeah, there you go. Char Famous Grill Tuna Steak right there. Hell yeah. Good times here. Just time for uh, everything to get open back up. No, that's not a Momo. <laughs> oh, she said this is a monster. She said a Momo. I said, no, this is not a Momo. So I let her touch it, you know, here, come here, honey. That's not the Momo, here, touch. Well, this one's got a sad face. For some reason, this guy has a sad face. This guy's smiling. See, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's just a, a statue. It's just artwork, honey. It's not a Momo, okay? It's like a totem pole, sort of. That one over there looks like an old man right there. I don't know if you can see the detail. He's smiling. Yeah, there's no Momos, there's no Oswongs, no Kukois or Chokois, whatever they call them, the little Sandman. Besides, you a Papa. Sweet girl. My goodness, good morning. <laughs> Face, my <laughs> dada. <laughs> she, she said I got a big nose. <laughs> Momo, kaya ako titignan mo yung Momo. Tignan no, mo nga si Dada. No, that's not a Momo. Na? 
Monster. It's not a Momo. <laughs> and that ants on my camera. <laughs> See, these Filipinas tell the babies. I figured it out last night. Okay, I figured out now why there's so many monsters here in the Philippines. So last night, last night Maria started getting rowdy and crying. And this one here, Janice said, Shh, be quiet. You're going to wake up the Momo. <laughs> I know that's what you told her. I don't speak Tagalog, but I know that's what you told her. Poor little thing. <laughs> That's what you said, right? You said, be quiet or you're going to wake up the Momo. <laughs> yeah. Now listen, what, it's not surprising, but I don't teach my kids that there's monsters or Oswongs or anything like that. And anytime that these ladies try to do it, I don't, I don't let them do that. I don't want my kids growing up thinking there's Oswongs <laughs> and monsters and the Kokoi, the Chokoi, the Sandman and all this crap. I'm not down with that. But... You know, she lives with her mother, and she's been with her mother nonstop this whole year. And so when she showed up at, at the house, we were going to go downstairs, and she pointed, and she said, no, there's a Momo down there because the, the light was out. And I asked her, I said, what the hell's a Momo? She said, that's a monster. So she didn't learn this from me, and they're not going to learn it from, from here. But last night, that one... You know, told her, shh, Maria, be quiet, be quiet, or the Momo, you're going to wake up the Momo. And she quieted back down. So that's what she's been learning at her mother's house. I mean, quite obvious, that's what they, they teach her at, that's what they taught her at her mother's house, not here. But now I'm starting to understand that they're using the Oswongs, the Momos, the the Kokoi, the Chokoi, the, the Chokolaka Laka, whatever they are. <laughs> The same way as our parents, or some parents, used to say, you know, when you talk about the boogeyman, you know, don't go outside, the boogeyman will get you. You know, they're, they're just using scare tactics to control these kids. So listen, ladies, I have to, I have to tell you, right? No more talk of Momo, Oswald. If she's crying, you're the one. No <laughs> I think there's other healthier ways to get the baby. Hey, Mariano. Back at the pool for another day of swimming. And I want you to take a look at that sky, folks. Beautiful. <laughs> Not a cloud in the sky. Oh, but there's a uh, super typhoon on the way. Bring your sleeper there. Huh? Yeah. For these ladies, my goodness. Fatima got the fashion going on, baby. Looks so beautiful today with his glasses on. My goodness. Maria, Force G. Oh, let me show you around. Let me show you around the pool over here. Look at these beautiful ladies and the babies. The pool is four feet, I think it is, and you got stairs here. And there's oh. stairs down at that corner down there. <laughs> so it's real easy access into the pool, you know. You're a little bit older, a little bit slower. And then let me just show you over here. You got these little hot tubs right here. Not hot tubs, but just little gathering areas in the pool. It's beautiful. And there's one over there. You got steps coming down. You can even sit over here at the bar. You can sit here at the bar all the way around. It's a beautiful, beautiful pool here at the Wild Orphan. And we got these, uh, plenty of these life preservers to float around in. And just beautiful little uh, sitting areas. How can you beat this pool? This says living the dream. Living the dream because you can. We get a better view of it. There you go, right there. Living the dream. Alright folks, so we went with the uh, with the pants at be home. Yeah. Mm -mm. There you go, water. Go. How's the food ladies? Mm. 
good? Yeah. Oh. Now, folks, can you tell which chair Forrest G was in? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, son. I don't know if you got any of that rice in your mouth, boy. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Man, uh -uh. you made a mess over here. What are you gonna do? You just want to be uh uh. They know you a good one. Uh uh. Oh, you don't beat baby. Okay. That's that. Sweetie, you've been, you got, you've been eating the whole time. What you asking? Uh uh. She's a good eater, like Fatty Man. All right, go ahead, baby. Ma, <laughs> heavy. Go with a sexy shot, baby. Do it. Let's do it. Let's see what you got. Work it, work it. Work it, work it, work it, work it. Come on out of the pool, baby. Come on out. Come on out, baby. Come on out for the camera. Come on out. Let's see that merchandise. All right, folks, taking a, taking a walk over here. Look at the floating bar. The ladies are going to start complaining in a minute because they're in the sun. They'll start saying, my ain't it. But the baby's got hungry. Maria, when she says, ah, ah, I think it's ah, ah, that means she's hungry. So it's time for us to walk it out and try to find something to eat. Hey ladies, I'm gonna take you to dinner on the floating bar. So folks, we're walking along. If you don't know anything about Filipinas, they do not like the sun, okay? So I'm sitting here walking along and these ladies are like right up behind me, right up on me. You know why? Because they're using me as a shade to block the sun off of their face. They can't even walk from here. They can't walk from here to Treasure Island without trying to stand in my in my shadow look at them and if I walk this way they'll go this way if I go this way they'll go this way they're trying to get in my shadow so they don't get any sun on their face and you know what I did find I did find some unauthorized whitening cream that Fatima Fatima tried to sneak some unauthorized whitening cream in on me and what happened to it, baby? That's not, I know that's for the... <laughs> so what, what happened to it? <laughs> what happened to the whitening cream? I gave it to Emmanuel. I told Emmanuel, I said, hey man, if you like white skin on your wife, here, give it to her. And let her rub that stuff, but I want some dark ladies. And you know what? The ladies weren't in the pool all day, so it, it was a good day. They did get some some tan on their skin, but you just got to keep searching around the CR to make sure this one doesn't doesn't sneak in that whitening cream, unauthorized products, contraband. My goodness. Look at her, folks. She's using for for G to keep the sun off her face. Poor Forrest G, being used as a sunshade. My goodness, man, we get no respect. <laughs> Folks, another great meal, Treasure Island. Um, hanging out with my buddy from Alaska. But check that sky out tonight. It's like a different beautiful sky over there. You got rain coming down. It rained on us for probably about 30 minutes. And as you can see, as you can see, we got some uh, lightning going on. Beautiful light show. I mean, it's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful light show it put on for us. How can you beat that? 
folks again i'm gonna tell you right now if i didn't say it last night if you go to treasure island get the uh wings the grilled wings 16 wings grill my buddy also said that the shrimp was absolutely delicious there's six big huge jumbo shrimp but he said he orders one for him and one for his, his wife it's not enough to share <laughs> so i forgot to go with the shrimp forgot to go with the shrimp but uh like i said always great food at treasure island shout out to uh, the waitresses carol and jenny thank you for taking care of us we'll definitely be back but now we got to get back to the room get these babies get these babies settled in for the night got the beautiful janice walking right here today's saturday it is a beautiful morning and folks when i was talking about getting people out here to clean up the beach somebody else has already took the helm on us I mean, look how clean the beach is so the beach is uh is nice for the weekend here for all the folks got a nice calm day on subic bay the sunshine baking on those mountains over there and we've had a uh, Several folks check in and several of the hotels have got a, I don't want to say a crowd, but they, they've got customers, they've got guests. And that's a good thing. Yeah, folks, we're almost about to check out a couple hours here. Great stay here at the Wild Organ. Great food over at Treasure Island. And the weather cooperated with us. Could not ask for better weather. And we're getting out of here uh, before this other typhoon comes in, I guess in a couple days, what have you. Folks, uh, last night was kind of low key. I mean, after we went and ate, hung out with my buddy from Alaska over there for a minute at uh, Treasure Island. We came back and I don't, it was dark. So I was thinking it's time to go to sleep. So we like started trying to get the babies to bed. <clears throat> and somebody realized it was only, it was only about seven o'clock. But you know what, we went to bed early and that worked out real well because I woke up feeling fresh and crisp for, uh, for today. So we're gonna maximize the morning and then head back over to the penthouse suite. And here comes the beautiful Janice and my sweet Maria. Moby Dick's Mer Mermaid Tavern. No cigars, pipes, happy hour. I don't know who that was placed, but. There's a look in there. Look, there's a pool table. And again, that's Scallywag's Bar. You know, right here by the pool. And there's a look around, there's a mobile, mobile Dick's Tavern, and they do have an ATM machine in here. I'll just give you a little tour around. Used to be the coffee shop. Well, there you go, so there's your look around. Wild Orchid, my friends. a beautiful day before the Super Typhoon coming in here. Let me go check out. And then from the entrance here, there you go. Interesting Moby Dicks from the from the outside here. Great stay at the Wild Orchid, folks. Just love the open, wide open space. This is just the spaciousness of the place, you know. You go to a lot of these hotels or tight quarters. This one is not big parking lot. If you're bringing a car. You know, if you're if you're coming with a car there's plenty of parking out front huge parking lot obviously a big old pool beach front with the grassy area for the kids it's hard to beat it now 
you know, you do have to walk across this little road right here to get to the beach. So I'll just take you on this tour. Okay, let's come out this little door. And got the Lamborghini over there waiting on me. Now, see, you do have this little sorry, sorry store here. So if you're staying at a beachfront room, that's the entrance. So you, you're right next to the sorry, sorry store. And if you need anything, yeah, you just walk across this road, and here you are. And of course, this is Captain Rob's Barefoot Bar and Barbecue, which is not open now. But when it is, go get the tuna steak. And then you just come through here. All right, folks. I thought you were going outside, sir. Yeah, I'm headed down to the end down here right. to the boat, man. Are you vlogging, sir? Yeah. Hi. This is how you get across, folks. Come over here and see the boat, man. Hello, sir. How are you? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, folks. 
Here's a look around. I'm going to back. Don't go back. One person go back. Whoever wants to go back. Ah, folks. The ladies are so scared of falling in the water. You know why? Because they can't swim. I can't. Fadima, if the boat goes down, I'm going to save all of you. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my friend. I'm standing on the front and keeping the... Hold on, Force G. Hold this on, your baby. first boat ride, buddy. No, I just not. Eh? Oh, no. I... Okay, yeah. He's taking the boat before. Hello, my friends. Oh, it's just a beautiful little boat ride across over there. And that's looking back towards National Highway. And here's our boat man. I'm standing in the way, so I wonder if I don't go off for the drink here. We just use the bamboo pole to get, get us across this little... It's only about, I don't know, three, four foot deep, somewhere in there. Prepare to beach! All right. Everybody off. Try to make sure they get off. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Again, here's a look around. There's a boatman right there. Thank you very much for getting us across, my friend. Hello. Come here. Come Activity here at the market. There's two factors. Number one, it's Saturday. Number two, there's a super typhoon coming. We got traffic all over the place here. Oh. What happens when you get? You got Rick and Racer. Rick and Racer's coming around on the left and right. new business right here called Pass Fast. Some type of delivery services. Right here next to the fish place. Next stop is to pick up our laundry. Okay, baby. <laughs> yeah. Folks, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank everybody for joining me on today's video. That thing down, many pearl style. I want to thank you for joining me on today's video. If you're not a subscriber, bottom right hand corner of your screen, hit that overstay road sign. Get on board my train. Food, beer, visas, bad behavior. Beautiful women, barbecue, a lot of beer drinking. I'm trying to get home before this super typhoon hits starting this evening. Hey, just a nuisance. We'll be fine where we're at. 
other places might not be so lucky, but uh, we'll, we'll just hunker down in the fortress, in the penthouse suite. We'll make it. I'll see you guys on the next one, and peace out, my friend.